Number 16 says a block of mass M equals 4.1 kilograms is released from rest from point A and slides on a frictionless track as shown in the figure below. Assume HA equals 6.9 meters. So A, determine the block speed at point B and at point C and B, determine the net work done by the gravitational force on the block as it moved from point A to point C. So in this problem we have a conservative force, so gravity is a conservative force, so gravity equals conservative force, and so whenever you have a conservative force you can use um, you can use conservation of energy to uh, to solve your problem, especially when you have velocity. So, um, for example, the kinetic energy equation is one half of m v squared, and so it has the term for velocity in it. So I can use the the um, conservation of energy equation, which is that the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy equals zero. So this is the conservation of energy equation. If um, if we were using non-conservative forces, then we would use the work energy theorem, which the work energy theorem is that the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy equals the work done. But in our case, the only force acting on it is a conservative force, and so we can use the conservation of energy equation. So the first thing I do is I want to expand the equations so uh, to to uh, get the whole thing in there. So the change in kinetic energy is the same thing as saying uh, the the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, and so and then the change of potential energy is the same thing as saying the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. All of that's equal to zero. Now, my equation for kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. So my final kinetic energy would be one-half mass times the velocity. And if I'm finding the velocity at point B, so it would be the velocity at point B, minus one-half mass times the velocity at point A. Now, if the object starts at rest, like it says, then my velocity at point A is zero. So this whole term becomes zero. And now my equation for potential energy is mgh, mass times gravity times the height. And so I, I can add in plus the mass times the gravity times the height at point B minus mass times gravity times the height at point A. And all that should equal zero. Now since my velocity at point A is zero, I can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So I have one-half mass times velocity at point B plus mass times gravity times HB minus mass times gravity times HA equals zero. Now don't forget to keep the square on this. I, I um, I'm bound to mess this up, but uh, it, the equation for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So make sure to keep it squared. Now what we're wanting to do is isolate the velocity, and so I'm going to add mgh to the other side, and I'm going to subtract mg or mghb to the other side. So I'll end up with one half mass times velocity at point b squared equals m positive mgha minus m g h b and remember h a is the height at point a h b is the height at point b now the problem doesn't tell me what the mass is and it doesn't tell me what the velocity is either so I, and right now i have two unknowns the mass and the velocity are both unknown so what i can do is i can factor out the mass on this side so that it's being multiplied by gh and then I can divide this mass to the other side and so it will cancel each other out. So that's what I'll do. Just so you follow along with me, I'll do it in, uh, in two steps. One half mv b squared equals mass times g h a minus g h b now some of you are th saying you could have factored out the g as well because the g's in both of these of these terms, but uh, I don't need to. I don't want to. 
So I'm going to move some of this stuff up out of the way a little bit and I'll make some more room down here and uh, keep keep going. So we have, we're going to divide by this mass. So I'll have one half V at point B, one half the velocity at point B squared equals mass times gravity times height at point A minus gravity times height at point B divided by mass. And so, of course, you can see that these cancel out. So I'm left with one-half velocity at point B squared equals GHA minus GHB. And now, the last thing I need to do before I, I uh, uh, take the square root of the velocity at point B squared is I need to multiply both sides by 2. So that will leave me with the velocity at point B squared equals 2 times gravity at, times the height at point A minus gravity times the height at point B. And then I can take the square root of both sides. That will get rid of that. And I'll, I'll have that the velocity at point B equals the square root of 2 times the gravity at point A minus the gravity at point B. So at this point, you just got to plug in numbers. So you get the velocity, the velocity at point B is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8, times the height at point A was 6.9 minus 9.8 times the height at point B, which we said was it, it's 3.2. And so all you got to do is plug that into a calculator and you should get, um, you should get a velocity is equal to 8.5158 eight six eight now it also wants the velocity at point C so whenever you look at this equation right here the only thing you have to change to get the velocity at point C you do not need to re go through and do the change of kinetic energy because uh, if and the, the mistake most people are going to make is they're going to they're going to redo this whole equation they're going to say okay I found it from point A to point B now I got to find it from point B to point C. Well, guess what? The initial kinetic, the initial velocity at point B is not zero, so you don't get stuff canceled out. So the easiest way to do it is to start back at point A and find it from point A to point C. And so we can do that really quick just by changing this to VC and changing this to GHC. And and if you just make that those two changes in this equation, you'll be able to find the velocity at point C because you're essentially using the same algebra all the way through because you're starting with a zero velocity in the very beginning. And so the velocity at point C, uh, you're going to plug in two. Uh, you'll plug in two times nine point eight times six point nine minus nine point eight times two point zero. Take the square root of that, and you should get nine point eight as the velocity at point C. The last thing that this question asks is determine the work done by gravitational forces on the block as it moved from point A to point C. So the, the key word here is as it moved. Okay, so we know we're dealing with kinetic energy. Okay, so determine the work done by gravity. We know that the work energy theorem says that the work is equal to the change of kinetic energy plus the change of potential energy. But it just wants to know the work done by gravity. And so um, it just wants to know the change in kinetic energy. If it started out with zero kinetic energy, so the work is equal to the, the final kinetic energy, or the final minus the initial kinetic energy. And so if it started out with zero kinetic energy, because it started out at rest, velocity equals zero, then we, we know that the work is equal to the final kinetic energy. And this is why this question actually gives us the, the mass of the block, because uh, we didn't need to know the mass to determine its velocity, but we do need to know the mass to determine its kinetic energy, because kinetic energy is one-half mass times velocity squared. We know the velocity was at point C. It, we, we said that it was 9.8, so one-half so times the mass times 9.8 squared. Now the mass it, it gives us in the problem is 4.1 kilograms. So we can cross that out and put 4.1. If you plug that into your calculator, 
you should get an answer of 196.882 joules.